Hi everyone and welcome back. I need to confess that I have a tremendous appreciation for people that left their 9 to 5 jobs and pursued their long life dreams. I believe that I'm one of those guys as writing and filming about audio gear is what I like doing the most. When it comes to audio manufacturers, the smaller they are, the more I like them because they need to work harder to prove to the world that their products are great and as far as I know, the very best products came from difficult times. Today I'll review a pair of bookshelf speakers that were made by a family in Latvia that sound way above their price point. With a catch, you will need to build them yourselves like some sort of audiophile Lego kits. And let's talk about them in the usual fashion. <music> We are talking about a one-man show, or more exactly, a one-family show business run by Eddie Apenitis from Grobina, Latvia. I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Eddie is also the mastermind behind Sound of Eden loudspeakers that I have reviewed some three years ago. Uh, here is my Sound of Eden Crescendo Uno review, in case you are wondering. Eddie told me privately that he wanted to create uh, some great sounding loudspeakers, but without costing you an arm and a leg. And this is how he came out with the idea of creating do-it-yourself loudspeaker kits. And this is how he created DIY Sound website, which I will link below. At this point, three models of loudspeaker kits are being provided and I'll be reviewing the much smaller one, but in truth, it's not really small. It's called Light Loudspeaker and it goes for 900 euros for the full kit or if you go with the stands included then you'll pay an extra 100 euros so 1000 euros in total you'll get an easy to understand step-by-step -step building instruction and you can build them yourselves or of course it will be much cooler if this would be a family activity or maybe your friends can give you a helping hand Eddie sent them as a finished product, so sadly I didn't build them myself. That is my only disappointment as an avid LEGO fan. I would love building something like this with my son. Although these are bookshelf loudspeakers, as you can see, their cabinet sizes are much bigger compared to traditional, you know, commercial bookshelf speakers. And I actually like this part because the sound will also be bigger and less boxy. Before you start complaining about their unfinished look, you should know that this decision was made deliberately, so you can paint them exactly as you wish. You can unleash your imagination or maybe your kid can go wild and unlock the artist within. These are also not lightweight loudspeakers, I find them heavier than usual and a pair will weigh around 35 kilos or 77 pounds and that is a great thing because the cabinets won't rattle when some heavy bass notes will be dropping on you. Although we're paying only 900 euros for a kit like this, we're getting some impressive drivers, more exactly SB Acoustic Tweeters and Oofers, which are known for their uh, high rigidity and also ultra low distortion numbers at much higher volumes. We have 1 inch tweeters and 6.5 inch Oofers, which are ported on the back. The frequency response sits at 40 Hz, 20 kHz, and these are easier to drive compared to anything that I have tried at my place having a sensitivity of 89 db and nominal impedance of 4 ohms also maximum power handling of 100 watts you don't need some massive or uber powerful amplifiers to make them sing i tried some entry to mid-level amplifiers of topping and song calls like pa7 pa7 plus la90 discrete uh, sgp1 by song calls and all of those sounded just fine with these loudspeakers so you don't need some ultra high-end electronics to make them sing. If you'd like to know more about them, then may I suggest checking out the official webpage of these loudspeakers. I will leave a link below so you won't need to search for that. All right, this is basically it. So let's hit some eardrums and let's check their sound. About three years ago, I have reviewed their Sound of Eden Crescenda Uno loudspeakers, which were made by the same team. Those cost about three times as much as these, but those use higher quality components 
uh, better crossovers, better drivers, tweeters and woofers, and the sound is considerably more technical. These, by comparison, the do-it-yourself sound light speakers, um, they will impress more, I believe, a music lover than a snobby audiophile because I find them much easier to listen to. The sound is more natural, more lifelike. There is some sort of smoothness and easygoing nature in a way. Uh, I went through my usual collection of blues, jazz and rock, usually all the recordings, and although I could still hear those imperfections, all that his, everything was actually very natural in a way, like listening to some vinyl or something like that. Uh, the sound was uh, just extremely natural and uh, tonal balance was not going up and down, so I couldn't describe these as, you know, having a stronger treble or something like that, but I definitely felt a little bit more energy in the mid-range and in the bass. Actually, the bass, these have slightly more bass quantity-wise compared to usual bookshelves of this size, so um, I was surprised actually by the low-end extension compared to, say, LS50 by uh, CAF or maybe uh, Monitor Audio Gold 100, so these are definitely providing a little bit more oomph, more punch in the bass, and not only extension, but also, you know, the kick in the bass, because uh, these have an amazing uh, crossover with point-to-point -point wiring, and you can feel that the sound is slightly livelier and more physical in a way. Although Eddie told me that he tried to make these as linear as possible without inducing some sort of colorations into the mix, I can certainly say that uh, these are definitely providing a little bit more energy in the mid-range and bass compared to their uh, Sound of Eden Crescent Uno, for example. So quantity-wise, there is a little bit more bass and a little bit more mid-range. Uh, maybe it's not just the energy, what maybe the vibration of uh, those regions, but I can feel these a little bit smoother, more natural, uh, easier to enjoy, although these are not as resolving and as transparent sounding. Sound of Eden loudspeakers, by comparison, were all about technicalities. Sounding super fast, having super fast decays, uh, very fast impulse response, uh, very wide frequency response, uh, also very resolving sounding, unearthing simply the smallest intricacies from your music. So those were showing actually some uh, crazy amounts of micro details, basically on the same level with my former CAF reference free loudspeakers. So those were incredibly technical, uh, but at the same time, I didn't find them as, you know, easy to enjoy, easy to like, easy to listen to for longer periods of time. But these are no longer making me focus on the smallest intricacies. These are no longer forcing my setup to give the absolute best. Instead, they are just relaxing me and uh, letting me enjoy the music without trying to analyze it. Sometimes you might hear me talking about good linearity, meaning that nothing is going up and down in terms of frequency response, so everything is linear, yet the sound is fun, it's enjoyable, it compels you to add more music to your playlist, it compels you to go with the flow, and I can certainly say that these loudspeakers have that good linearity. I have returned from Munich High End Show about one week ago, where I have tried plenty of 1 million euro rooms, and those uh, were great, some of those not so great. But when I'm listening to these, I have a wild smile on my face because these are costing just 900 euros, yet the sound is uh, actually really outstanding and they can do proper justice to music without costing you an arm and a leg. And at 900 euros, you can definitely find some better looking loudspeakers with some finished veneers, so on and so forth. But in terms of Sonics, uh, it will be close to impossible, but I don't think, honestly, you can find something better at this price point. To me, they sound better than LS50 by CAF, they sound better than Q Acoustics um, Concept 500, they sound better than uh, Monitor Audio Gold 100, so the list goes on. Uh, in the Sonics, these are really rocking at 900, 1000 euros. After having a few conversations with Eddie, with the mastermind behind these loudspeakers, 
it was clear to me that he didn't want to compromise their sound in any way. You'll be surprised to know that we have Mundorf capacitors, we have point-to-point -point wiring, we have fat copper coils, uh, usually that can be found in very expensive loudspeakers at least three times the price of these loudspeakers. I also have Mondorf capacitors, point-to-point -point wiring and thick uh, copper coils in my Rado TD 2.2, but my loudspeakers cost 40 times as much, so I want you to understand about the super high value that we are talking right now, about the super high price to performance ratio of these loudspeakers. So again, in terms of looks, you can definitely find better looking loudspeakers like a finished product, but in terms of Sonics, I really doubt that you can be this at this price point because the components, the drivers are really of high quality. Besides the lifelike tonality that I have mentioned before, sounding, you know, quite natural, easygoing and very easy to digest and easy to like, I also like the way these are dealing with imaging and with the sound stage. Although 6.5 woofers I have tried many times in many, many other loudspeakers, uh, they have a bigger cabinet size compared to the usual, you know, commercial loudspeakers and that makes them also quite bigger sounding and less boxy sounding like what I was getting from Monitor Audio Platinum 200. So uh, maybe these are not as technical, not maybe, these are not as technical like the sound of Eden Crescendo Uno, not as tight, not as super fast, not as super nimble, but the sound stage is definitely exactly as big. And those impressed me in terms of soundstage, how big they sounded. I was listening to King by Florence and the Machine at, at the 2 minute and 43 second mark. The sound is simply exploding from like 25 dB volume to like 95, 90 dB volume. So everything is going much louder, much stronger. And usually those jumps in dynamics can cripple bookshelf loudspeakers. Uh, but that was not the case with this. The sounds were not piling on each other. Uh, the sound didn't feel unrefined or just muddy sounding. On the contrary, the sound were pushed to all directions and the sound stage was actually quite interesting. And the best of all, the imaging. Maybe not the sharpest or the most precise imaging, but I could still say that the sound is there, the voice is right there, the drums are right there so on and so forth. So these are still doing soundstage quite impressive, maybe even more impressive compared to what I have heard in this price point. So yeah, amazing soundstage in my opinion. Overall, I'd say that these are sounding more like small stand floor speakers rather than like big bookshelf speakers, if that makes any sense. When crafting loudspeakers, the most important recipe for success is to never cripple dynamics and uh, letting the sounds fly off in all directions without pressing the brakes. Very few know about this, but the crossover circuits are pretty much crucial for, you know, making all of that so they can limit dynamics or on the contrary, they can unlock some wild dynamics. And as I mentioned before, we have some big Mundorf caps, we have point-to-point -point wiring, we have a thick copper coils and all of that I believe simply unlocked the sound and made them quite punchy and quite dynamic, uh, especially in the bass region. Actually, if you want some comparisons, I find them punchier sounding compared to LS50 by Kef and considerably punchier compared to Q Acoustics Concept 300, which by the way cost about three times as much. So these are definitely punching quite hard in the bass and the overall the sound you can feel the force behind the sound that is kicking your eardrums and also your body as well. And the best part about these dynamics, you don't really need a gargantuan or super expensive amplifier to unleash the Kraken within. Yes, I'm using an expensive Quart Electronics Ultima 5 power amplifier, but I tried even a few entry to mid-level offerings like topping PA7, PA7 Plus, uh, LA90 Discrete, and also Sonkos SGP1, and all of those sounded really outstanding. And if you want my recommendation, I will go with that Sonkos SGP1, which was slightly thumpier, slightly livelier, and more impactful at the same time. There is just one thing that will not wow a snobby audiophile, and that is their resolution and their transparency. And this is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who you ask. It's a bad thing because you will not hear the last drop of resolution coming from your tunes. 
uh, from your gear, so on and so forth. But it's a good thing because you don't really need the very best DAC, the very best streamer, the very best amplifier and stereo setup to unleash their maximum potential. For me, that wasn't really a bad thing because at this price point, these are competing with a few Bluetooth speakers and with a few vintage speakers. And by the way, these are still livelier and punchier and more dynamic sounding, so I would still pick these uh, compared to those. But compared to Bluetooth speakers, hell no. On top of that, who on earth listens to only audiophile proof music? I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. I'm into all kinds of old blues, old jazz, old rock, some metal, some electronic tunes, and those are far from perfect uh, recorded and uh, mastered and so on, but those sounded great on these loudspeakers, and for me that's good enough. Let's briefly talk about the frequency response. Their bass stood out immediately compared to speakers of the same size or, you know, just bookshelf speakers. So usually I'm not getting a punchy performance or a very dynamic sound, but these were different. These were quite visceral, quite physical, and you can hear those bass pretty easily. Uh, what was interesting is that the bass was also going slightly into the sub-bass territory. So 40 Hz, 35 Hz notes, I was hearing them pretty easily and I didn't need to crank the volume much higher to, to hear that information that is, you know, hitting my body and my eardrums. Uh, so I can definitely say that uh, these have more bass compared to something like FLS50 and you don't need lots of time to appreciate the extra bass oomph and rumble that is coming at you. So in terms of bass, these are actually quite interesting, quite good. And overall, I'd say that we have an impressive bass quantity-wise that can still linger a little bit around the sub-bass territory. Compared to Sound of Eden Crescendo Uno loudspeakers, I believe that the mid-range is a little bit fuller bodied, so it reminds me a little bit about the sound of Dyn Audio speakers which are thicker sounding in here, denser, weightier in the mid-range, as opposed to lightweight or ethereal sounding in the mid-range. And this effect actually uh, improves everything that has to do with mid-range. Woodwind instruments, string-based instruments, vocal cords, vocals, everything is a little bit stronger and all that information is brought a little bit forward. So yes, the mid-range is a little bit forward, but I actually like that effect because the voices they need to stay you know, in front of you. So don't get me wrong, these are still balanced sounding in terms of frequency response, but there is slightly more energy oozing from the mid-range and bass, if you ask me. The trebles have a decent extension, a decent spark and brilliance, but at the same time I find it uh, smoother, more relaxed sounding compared to what I'm usually getting from CAF and radio loudspeakers. So these are not providing the last drop of information, lots of micro detail information that is not happening, but at the same time you can listen to some bad master music for hours and hours. These don't have any kind of listening fatigue. You can get a little bit with monitor audio speakers and with calves, but not with these. So these are really going really easy in the treble, like putting butter on a frying pan, so very easy to listen to. Wrapping up, when I'm thinking about 900 euros, I'm thinking about some entry-level loudspeakers that don't possess any kind of strong technicalities like resolution, transparency, speed, impact, soundstage. And while the resolution wasn't really outstanding, I believe that everything else was on par with pricier loudspeakers. And if I would pick three very best skills that impressed me on these loudspeakers, that would be lifelike tonality, that would be dynamics, and that would be soundstage. If these three are important to you, then I cannot recommend you enough these loudspeakers, especially if you like building something with your own hands, with your family, with your friends. These are really great sounding speakers. At 900 euros is close to impossible complaining about this, and I'm already super curious about their passion and vintage loudspeakers, which are ever so slightly more expensive. Alright folks, this is it. Don't forget to listen to more music, to be positive, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers!